Hey, everybody. Pastor Mike here coming with Pastor Jimmy Harvey. Uh, we are combining efforts because we had a special guest with us at Lewis Avenue Church of God of Prophecy, where Pastor Jimmy pastors right here in Tulsa, and it was Pastor Philip Barnett giving the prophecy from 2007, the Azovmana one. And for the first time in the United States, he gave the Zovamana too. Pastor Jimmy, man, it's great to be on here with you tonight. Oh, it's so good to be here with you, Mike, and to be able to share uh, things that God is doing in this last day's church. You know, uh, we are the church. We're the force yeah. of today and a force to be reckoned with. And it's time for us today to step into position and listen to the voice of the Lord. It sure is. And the details Pastor uh, Philip gives, uh, especially when he talks about the church needs to wake up, that resonates with me. And I think it's going to resonate with all of you that are watching. One thing I want to encourage you, this is part one. Again, it's a Zovman 01. And if you even have heard parts of that on, on my YouTube channel or elsewhere, this is different. He gave this live at Pastor Jimmy's church, and uh, I was there to enjoy that too. But don't forget get to share it with friends on social media. Make sure you let others know so they can watch and be watching for part two because it's coming up next. Amen, Pastor Jimmy? Amen. Let's go with it. Yeah. The government's going to take care of the government. The government, the government is turned over to the devil right now because the church is asleep. Shame on you. You say you're a Christian and don't go vote in elections. I had a dream one night at about 5 o'clock in the morning. And I've been preaching in May. This May will be 50 years that I've been preaching. And so I learned way, way, way back that at nighttime, I can be, you know, God can, the Holy Spirit can bring a scripture to your mind or a thought. So I'd always write it down. I had it on my tomb, uh, um, in English, end table. End table there by the bed. I would always keep a pencil and paper, something to write with. And uh, so... Uh, that's why I, I did. Well, this particular night, I had this dream, and it's like it was an amazing dr a dream with a lot of scenes, very long. About 5 o'clock in the morning, I got up. It's like, oh, my goodness, this is from God. I don't have to write this down. I'll never forget this. This is amazing. I was really tired. I thought, well, I'll lay down a few minutes, and I'll get up and write it down. Well, I laid down, went to sleep, woke up, and couldn't remember anything. And for two weeks, I prayed and I fasted. God, what was the dream? What was I thinking about before I went to bed? Well, I couldn't remember. Two weeks later, I just put it in the hands of the Lord. I said, Lord, it's in your hands. I don't remember. Like, remember Nebuchadnezzar had the dream and, and uh, Joseph came along and told him what he dreamed and what the interpretation was. I didn't have Joseph with me. And so I couldn't remember anything. But there was a God purpose for this. 2007, January 18th, I'm going to, I went to bed, and it was Christian, I was four years old, I was in bed with him, he was sick or something, and, and along about five o'clock in the morning, I have this dream, and every part of this dream, inside the dream, I know what the next scene is going to be, and I'll think, oh, you know, this is going to be next, and this is going to be next, and I'm asleep, I'm in this dream, and then it gets to the very last, it's like, oh, the next scene is where this, this dream is. And it goes to that scene, and then I realize this is that dream that I had all of those years ago, and I couldn't remember, and I woke up and sat up in bed. It's like, oh, my goodness, it's been, what, 10 years ago. I had that dream, and now it's happened again. And the dream was called a zovmana. I'm not going to go into it. A zovmana means from, well, in this dream, there were eight giant mountains, the mountains were in the shape of large nuclear uh, rockets. Like, if you remember, we've got a lot of gray hairs. The old Apollo uh, space missions, okay, the big giant rockets. It, it was like that, but it was larger. And the top had a nuclear explosion on top. And these eight mountains were in a, a crescent shape. The mountains were frozen. They were like nuclear rockets, but they were frozen. And I was a little ways away. And... Over the next few days, God revealed to me the things, what those rockets meant, and that they were designed to hit. It was, there would be a war between the United States and a reformed Soviet Union with Russia, Belarus, and eastern Ukraine. 
And those rockets would be American nuclear missiles that would destroy East, eastern Ukraine. The first one would hit in uh, Kiev, and then it would just circle around to Sumy and Kharkov and all the cities, all the way down to the bottom to Odessa, and all of eastern Ukraine would be destroyed. One day I was praying, and when I saw these rockets, these different scenes, I was on a bus. <coughs> Excuse me, I was on a bus in central Ukraine, and I'm thinking, there's no mountain like that in, in central Ukraine. And so I turned to somebody on the bus. I said, what is that mountain called? And, and this lady says, Azovna. And I said, Azovna what? It sounded like it had a lot of vowels. I thought it was an Italian word. And I said, Azovna what? And she turned to me again. She said, Azovna. Okay. So after the dream, and I'm trying to cut, I'm leaving out a bunch of information. But after the dream, a couple of days later, I was praying on the floor. And I said, Lord, what does Azovna mean? He said, get up and write it down. So I got up at the table and I, I wrote it and I began, began, write, began writing it slowly. Capital A, and I paused. Capital Z, thank you. And I paused. And hang on just a second. I usually don't drink water but when I'm preaching, but <clears throat> you'll have to forgive me. I've had terrible trouble with my throat. The devil would like to stop this, but he's not going to. So I wrote a capital A, and I paused, and then a capital Z, I paused, and then an O, and I paused, and a V, and I thought, that's Azov, that's like the Azovsky C. And so I kept going, and, I, and then a capital M, capital E, capital N, capital A, I paused between each one, and after I, I, got the, I wrote the A, it's like, oh my goodness, I jumped up, I ran to the piano room, and grabbed my Bible, came back to that room, and, and it's like, and I threw open the Bible to the book of Daniel. Remember when K King Nebuchadnezzar had had the dream and, we, no, when, when the kingdom was about to be destroyed, the hand appeared on the wall and it wrote, man, ah, man, ah, you farce your kingdom is judged and given to the Medes and Persians. Okay, man, ah, so Azo had to do with the Azovsky Sea. And man, ah, when I, I saw that man, ah, it's like, Oh, this is a compound word. And I grabbed the Bible and I read that. And I read the interpretation of what Daniel, that God had given through Daniel to King Nebuchadnezzar, Menah. And after I read that, the Holy Spirit spoke to me. And he said, from the Azovsky Sea to the Belarusian border, to, from the Nipper River, oh, and Kiev is on the Nipper River, from the Nipper River over to the Russian border, all of eastern Ukraine will be destroyed by these eight nuclear, American nuclear missiles. And so that's a vast amount of territory. And God had given me many things in the dream that Russia was going to invade Ukraine. And there would be a holocaust against the Jews. All Jews had to flee. Especially, I told the people, and God had told me, from the area of, of Donbass, which is the, the, uh, the Donetsk area, and it was the heaviest populated part of the country with 9 million people, only 5 million people in the Kiev County area, and then the Lugansk area, which was 2 million. So 11 million people lived in that area, and God said there's going to be another holocaust. All of the Jews have to get out. So I took a few months, over three months, and had hired a girl, and she helped me, and she made 13 pictures and videos of the things I had seen in the, in the dream. And one, one uh, scene, God had opened the sky to me and showed me a scene during that night. God spoke to me the next night, excuse me, God spoke to me five hours from, from midnight till five in the morning. And God, would, he gave me four visions. At midnight, I was praying, and I was really upset at Nancy Pelosi. She had been appointed the first time as the Speaker of the House of Representatives. First thing she did was, with three other congressmen, wrote a law that any churches, any pastors who preach against abortion and homosexuality, that's political, and they will lose their tax-exempt ex status, and that any uh, radio commentators like Rush Limbaugh, uh, Sean Hannity, Glenn Beck, they would lose their license to be on the radio. And I was really upset about it. And this was the day after the, the, the dream had taken place, after 10 years, the first dream, and then it repeated. 
And the second dream was exactly the same, except I was much, much closer to these eight nuclear missiles that were going to be launched and destroy eastern Ukraine. So I sat on the edge of the bed. It was, I'd been praying in the floor, and I sat on the edge of the bed, and I asked the Lord, Lord, what's going to happen? So I looked. It's like, oh, it's midnight. I better get in bed. So I, I laid down. As I started to lay down, the Lord spoke something to my heart. And I thought, oh, I better write that down. So I got up and I started writing down. And a vision appeared to me of all of eastern Ukraine from the uh, uh, Azovsky Sea up to the Belarusian border from the Dnieper River over to Russia. It was black. It had been burned black by nuclear bombs that had fallen in that area. Well, between midnight and 4 o'clock in the morning, I had, God gave me four visions. After each vision, I would say, Lord... I don't understand this. What does this mean? And instantly he would speak the answer to my mind, and I would write it down. Then I'd ask another question. And so it went that way for four hours. Then the Lord spoke to me and said, go to the kitchen. I went to the kitchen, and I'm thinking in Ukraine. I'm going to take this off for a minute. In Ukraine, because things are not haven't been back in those days, they weren't clean at all. They didn't have... Uh, much in the way of vacuum cleaners are easy. Nothing was easy to clean. And so whenever we prayed at church, we didn't get down and, and sit like on our, our legs on the floor. You never would do that. Everybody, we, I say, oh, come up and, and stand na toy no. Stand on your knees. You're calling stand, Come and stand on your knees. And that's the way everybody played, pr- uh, prayed because the floor was so dirty. And I thought, well, God told me to go to the kitchen. At 4 o'clock, and we said, go to the kitchen. I'm thinking, well... He probably wants me to go pray. And what I had the habit of all those years in Ukraine, when I go to a town to organize a new church or even there in the apartment where I lived, I would stand on my knees. These winters are very, very long. And so the radiators are right underneath the windows. And you don't control your own heat. The government has these buildings around. And the heat water, and it goes underground to all the buildings, and the radiators are underneath the windows. So I would always stand on my knees next to the radiators and, pl- and pray, looking out the window, God, you know, give revival to this town, help me to organize a church, help me to get people saved. And so I thought, well, the Lord wants me to go pray on my knees in the kitchen by the window, but there's a kitchen table there, a little table in the way. So I get into the kitchen, and that's not what God wanted. I'm looking, as soon as I get there, I notice... This strange formation of clouds in the sky. And there were two lines of clouds. There were straight lines of clouds. One of them was under the other. And both of them were going from downtown Kiev, where they started, to southwestern Ukraine in two slightly different directions. And it wasn't one line or two lines of clouds. It it was a bunch of clouds, separate clouds, in each line. And each cloud was in the shape of a car, a bus, a truck. And I'm like, oh, my goodness, what does this mean? So I go back to the piano room. I get on the floor, and I'm writing everything I had seen in what God had shown me. This this wasn't a vision. I'm looking. I'm seeing this above Kiev. But my apartment was about three or four miles east of downtown. So I wrote down everything, and then I'm sitting there on the floor thinking, what does this mean? And I'm thinking, What happened to the clouds? So I go back to the kitchen really fast, and the wind was blowing hard, and it had blown both lines of clouds way to the southwest. And I put my face against the window pane, and I'm trying to look, and there's one more big cloud in the shape of like a big giant bus right smack over downtown. And I looked at that one, and I I could see the, the tail end of the two lines of clouds that had been blown all the way to the southwest. And so I see this one big cloud, and God spoke to me. And he said, there will be two evacuations from Kiev. The first one will take place when the Russian army is about to occupy Kiev. The second will come when the nuclear war between the reformed Soviet Union and the United States takes place. Three and a half weeks ago, four weeks ago, this war started. How many saw the evacuation of Kiev? Hundreds of thousands of cars in deadlock trying to get out of Kiev. And I come into the house, and this is on TV, and I'm thinking, Lord, the next part of Azovman. The, the prophecy was called the Azovman of Prophecy. I gave it in 2007 at our church. It was like two hours and 40 minutes I preached. 
People came from all over. the. I'd never done something like that. Came from all over Ukraine. And then we made a few videos, and they were copied and sold maybe 15 copies for, you know, a couple dollars a piece just for the cost of the material. And somebody at a church in South Kiev, a pastor named Constantine, he was an artist. He was over the art union for Kiev, and he, he called me, wanted me to come and preach the Azobin of Prophecy at his church. So I went one Saturday. I pre- it, their services were on Saturday. I preached two hours. Then the next Saturday, I went and preached another two hours. They videoed, gave a few copies around. And then a man from the, down at the Black Sea, had received, he was a pastor. His son was the number one jur- Christian journalist for Ukraine. He wanted me to come to the Black Sea, to his church. He said he had about 250 people. He said, we'll put you up in a hotel. I'll pay for everything if you'll just come and do the assumption of prophecy at our church. So I went down there and, and preached on Friday night. Saturday morning, Saturday afternoon, and Sunday morning did the Azobin of Prophecy. Interesting thing, they had hired a girl uh, from Hirson. Hirson is on the news every day, the fighting all around Hirson. She was from Hirson. She told me in 2014, she said, when I interpreted for you, I was thinking, this is impossible. Because I was telling them, Russia is going to invade Ukraine. They're coming to the Donbass. They're going to kill Jews. And every Jew on the east side of the the Dnieper River has to flee either to the west side of the Dnieper or to Israel because Russia is going to invade Ukraine. I got lots and lots of death threats, more than you could ever imagine on social media. I mean, I don't mean three or four, I mean dozens of death threats. And I would tell Masha, she would be so afraid. I said, Masha, quit reading them. Don't open the internet. I did what God told me to do. It's in God's hands. Just quit looking at it. So then 2013 comes along at the end of like November. Uh, there's a revolution begins in Kiev. And then early uh, the a war begins. The president Yanukovych, he flees. Eventually he flees. I mean, there was terror. I could tell you, I don't have time to talk about all the fighting, and everything that took place. I got caught in a battle. And anyway, <clears throat> so he flees from Kiev to the city of Rost- Rostov on Don in Russia by the Azovsky Sea. Immediately when he goes there, he goes on national television, he, he goes to the Virhovnaya Duma. The, the parliament in Moscow is called the Virhovnaya, the Supreme Duma, the Supreme Parliament of Russia. And he gives it an, a request on TV, national television, to all of Russia and to many other countries, please invade Ukraine and destroy these fascists who have taken democracy. These fascists who have taken over Ukraine, kicked him out. He, had before he got elected, he was in prison twice for raping women, five years. But he still, Putin had given millions of dollars because money was, I mean, $100 a month is a, was a big salary then in Ukraine. And so if you voted for Yanukovych, this rapist, you get $100. If you don't vote for him, your factory, you're fired from your job because they know who votes everything. All right. <clears throat> so anyway, he flees and he gives this invitation, a plea for Russian troops to please come in and take Ukraine and take Kiev. He gave an invitation. About three or four days before this current war starts, which act of the war has been going on for eight years. It hasn't stopped. 15,000 Russian or 15,000 Ukrainians were killed before the fighting started. That's one of the main reasons we left Ukraine was to keep our son from fighting. On, we didn't want Chris John anywhere near the Russian front. So we, we came three and a half years ago, and, and that was a miracle from God that we ended up back in the States after 26 years of being there. I did not want to leave. I did not want to leave. And God gave me a series of 17 dreams, 17 dreams. And every dream, dream was like, you've got to leave Ukraine. You've got to go back to your home. And I'd had a dream. In this dream, I traveled a great distance over many, many mountains, covered with trees and mountains and mountains. And I finally got to this valley. And I worked there for many, many years. I'm talking about in this dream. And then all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit spoke to me in the dream and says, it's time for you to go home. And I turned around and looked at the mountains that I had come over all of those years earlier to get to that valley. 
And I thought, I don't remember my way home. I don't know how to get back home from where I don't remember the way. And I started out and started out. And, <clears throat> and before I got <clears throat> to this, the, the end of the journey, like to America, it started raining and storming. And the final valley I had to pass through was filled with mud. And, and the whole world was starting to be covered by water with just a few mountains sticking up. And somehow I tracked through that mud. It was like to my knees. And I, I got over to this last mountain. I got up towards the top and there were no trees and the sun was shining. And my dad was there in a wheelchair with a blanket around him. It's like, I was waiting for you to come. I wasn't going to go to heaven or anything till you got here. And it was a dream that God gave me. So I knew this was a couple of years, two or three years before we left Ukraine, that somehow my dad was going to live until I went out of Ukraine. So anyway, the, the governor of the Donbass, which is Lugansk and uh, Darnitsa area, three or four days before this current war started, he goes on national television in Russia, and he makes a plea. Please, Russia, please, Putin, please, Virhovna and Duma, come in and destroy these fascists that are ruining the country. They're killing children and they're all these things. Of course, it was all lies. A national television, an invitation for Putin to come in. And it was broadcast to many countries. Last night, I was contacted Monday. We were down in Houston and people have been contacting me from all over the United States. Uh, millions of people are looking at Azovman again in uh, 2014. Uh, when the, the war started and, and Russian troops came in during the Olympics, uh, during the Sochi Olympics, and they, they uh, occupied uh, Crimea. And Ukraine didn't try to fight because it's, it, was, it would be silly because Crimea is a peninsula, and there's only a two-mile-wide stretch of land that goes from mainland Ukraine into Crimea. There's no way if they started the fighting... All of the Ukrainian troops there would have been surrounded and destroyed because the Russian Navy would come in and prevent Ukrainian troops from escaping. So wisely, they just let them have Crimea because we can't stand it against the Russian Navy. Then the fighting started in Donbass just a few weeks later because you know, the President Yanukovych had requested come in and, and take... Ukraine, Donbass is where all of the mineral resources and the industry and the metal industry is at in Ukraine. So they took that violent fighting. When that happened, this is exactly what the Azovman prophecy in 2007 had said would happen. It would be the Donbass first and all of that area. And so in 2014, seven years later, Azovmina went viral. Millions and millions of people saw Azovmina. Okay, from the Azovsky Sea, it, it ends in a nuclear war after Russia conquers all of eastern Ukraine. If this is Azovmina, they will conquer even Kiev. But he had no idea the buzzsaw he was walking into with his troops. Thousands and thousands of Russian troops have been killed. Even yesterday on the news, now we listen to Ukrainian news 24-7. We don't listen to Fox, rarely. Just, we just listen to Ukrainian news. It shows the battles. There's a battle that took place really close to our church. Fourteen tanks were attacking a church, a town there right next to uh, Kiev. I'd organized two churches in that town, had pastor there. We had many, many people in that town who were uh, uh, members of our church. And there was a big tank battle there a week ago Thursday or a week ago Wednesday. Fourteen tanks were trying to get it. It's the same road that goes right in front of our church and the Ukrainian army. We watched the battle on Ukrainian TV. We watched the battle. We watched the, U the Russian tanks being destroyed. They destroyed all the Russian tanks. And so our church area has been, the Russians haven't penetrated there. Azovman is going viral again in uh, uh, in Ukraine, the, the original that I did, many people are watching Brother Mike's. Thousands of people are watching Brother Mike's programs that we do. We've done five or six over the last few months, but the last few weeks we've done three or four. And a guy sent me $2,000 to send to Ukraine. I just got more money in this service tonight. So it's helping to get people out of the fighting, the terrible, terrible things that are happening in Kiev, in, in Mariupol. Oh, my goodness, Mariupol, Mariupol. 
They're slaughtering the women and children. We watch. We watch. They're burying the bodies, and they're just throwing the women into these long trenches and the children. God help us. We've got a bunch of sinners in control of our government in Washington. God help us. God help us. Anyway, last night uh, I had a guy contact me from Ohio. He said, Brother Philip, he, he said, I heard your prophecy in 2007 and I was living in Kiev. He said, Maybe north of Kiev there. He said, I heard the Azobin of prophecy and the Holy Spirit. God spoke to me. This is true. This war is going to happen. Russia is going to invade Ukraine. He said, so I did what you said in the prophecy. I moved to Lviv in western Ukraine. And then I thought, this is not enough. I'm moving to America. And he moved to Ohio. He said, so through your prophecy, I and my family are saved and we're not there because I believed what you preached in 2007. Another call last night from California, and she said, in 2007, when Philip preached and said, Russia is going to invade Ukraine, I believed it, and our family is in California. We escaped and fled because of Philip's preaching. Tell him thank you. Thank you that he stood up and preached what God told him. Thousands and thousands of people were saved the last 15 years since the Zobina was preached. We saved over 10,000 just Jews out of that area and in other thousands of Jews who fled on their own because all a lady by the name of Natalia Krizhanovskaya. We did a program with her, what, Wednesday night? If you have time, you need to get on My Harris Media and see what we did with the program Wednesday night. Natalia and I worked for, get together for many, many years uh, saving Jews and get, getting people out. Natalia took the Azobina prophecy to every synagogue literally in Ukraine and warned the Jews, God has spoken through Brother Philip that Rush is going to invade. And a lot of the people are crazy. We got a call from Moscow sent a message. He said, in 2007, after Philip gave the Azobina prophecy, I gave the prophecy to our pastor. And I told him about it, and he laughed me in the face. Russia is not going to invade Ukraine. This man is crazy. Russia will not invade Ukraine. He said that same pastor who looked me in the eye and laughed me in the face has already fled to America. It says in Amos, God will not strike without warning through his servants first. He cannot lie. He cannot lie. Now, let me share just a tiny bit. This is a Zovman of two. I have never preached this in America. That night, God's finished talking to me in January of 2007. And he said, you can't take anything, you can't leave anything out because there's a lot of negative things in there. You can't leave anything out of a Zobina. You can't, and he didn't call it a Zobina. He said, you can't leave anything out of what I told you. You can't add anything to it. If you preach it just the way I gave it to you, I will show you more. Well, that was one of the least things in my mind. And, uh, cause I, and then I forgot about it. And he told me, and there's a friend of mine by the name of Roger Whetstone. It was the first week of January, 1993. And I had moved to Ukraine in 92. I came back for three weeks at Christmas time. And right at the end, about the 7th or 8th or 9th of, of January, maybe the 10th, I don't know, I flew back to Ukraine for another year. We had a service. Sister Pat Fisher gave a message in tongues, and Brother Roger Whetstone gave the interpretation. And the Holy Ghost said, and I remember there were a lot of people in that service, and the Holy Ghost said, I'm not just calling you to Ukraine. I'm calling you to many countries to, to preach what I give you. So I thought about that. Well, almost 5 o'clock in the morning, what is in 2007, so it's 15 years later when the Lord gave me the Azobina prophecy. One of the last things he said, you are, I'm calling you to be a prophet, not just to Ukraine, but to many countries. And that's why we are back here in America, because I must warn people of what's getting ready to happen, not just in Ukraine, but to the nuclear war that's coming to America. What states and cities will be destroyed and what states and cities will not be destroyed. In his opening of one, God showed me, he put me on a building in southern Alabama, in Mobile, Alabama. And on this building, 
I see the Russian ICBM missiles coming across Canada to America. And I could see all the way from the Rocky Mountains all the way over to the East Coast. I could not see from where I was at. I couldn't see Florida, and I couldn't see anything on the west side of the Rocky Mountains. The first nuclear bomb, that, that ICBM nuclear missile that hit America, destroyed Chicago. The next one hit uh, Milwaukee, Wisconsin, but it was way up in the air. It didn't come down lower in the air, but it was way up in the atmosphere, but it blew up over Milwaukee. Then Cleveland, Ohio. Then St. Louis, Memphis, Nashville, New Orleans, Little Rock, Denver, Albuquerque, New Mexico. Then later on, God showed me a dream. In the dream, I saw two flights of Russian bombers, and they weren't the big giant bombers. They were like med medium-range bombers that had, would have to fly off of an of a, a, a aircraft carrier and be refueled in the air. One flight had four, four planes. The other flight had two. They all had nuclear uh, cruise missiles, and they dropped the missiles. Here's what I understood, what I saw. What I understood, three nuclear bombs will hit New York City. Two will hit Washington, D.C. One will hit Baltimore. One will hit uh, Maryland. Now, that's seven nuclear missiles, but only six planes I saw. So evidently, one of the nuclear bombs that hits New York City will be an ICBM missile that comes in because I only saw six, uh, six uh, of these planes with nuclear cruise missiles to hit cities in the Northeast. Cincinnati, God, you see, after the rapture of the church, a seven-year tribulation period will take place. After the rapture of the church, it says in Revelation... But in Revelation 3 and 10, to the church of Philadelphia, which is us, and I'm not going to go into this. I've taught this before here. He says, because you have kept the word of my patience, I also will keep you the Philadelphia church, which is what we are right now. I will keep you from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell on the earth. I will keep you from the tribulation period, not through it, from it. We could, I could talk to you a couple of hours. Rapture is before the seven-year tribulation period. Okay, We're going up in the rapture. It, the church will not be left behind. Okay, So the rapture takes place and the tribulation period begins. Remember God had told me in 2007 when he gave that initial prophecy. It was almost 5 o'clock in the morning. And he said, if you tell this prophecy just the way I gave it, you don't add to it, you don't take away from it, I will show you more. Well, I preached it three times. Videos were made in each of the churches. It went all around, and all it did was people hated me. Let's kill this guy. He's an American. It's, he's doing it because he's an American. How would you like to be an American in Ukraine telling them all of eastern Ukraine is going to be destroyed? The Russians are going to attack they're going to capture eastern Ukraine, and then there's going to be a nuclear war, and all of eastern Ukraine will be destroyed by eight American nuclear weapons. How would you like to tell that story? That night, it was almost 5 o'clock in the morning, God says, I've spoken this to others, and they have all refused to give this prophecy. So you'll have to do it by yourself. And God knows me. He knows it's like, if he says something, if he says jump, I'm just going to jump till I get too tired or he tells me to quit jumping. I don't even remember him saying, would you please do this? He just said, a father, sometimes my kids and your kids, they don't understand why mom and dad give instructions. Well, why, dad? Why, why, why? Well, sometimes we're so busy, we really don't have time to explain. Why. I don't have time now. Just do what I ask, okay? Just do it, okay? And so God says, do it. Everybody else has said no, so you'll have to do it by yourself. He said, I send you to many countries, not just Ukraine. The Azovman of prophecy. You know who, who the people who wanted to kill me the most, who, where most of the death threats came from? Russia, Moscow. It's where most of the death threats came from were from Russia. People in Ukraine just thought I was crazy. Russia attacking Ukraine. The, the translator in 2014 who had translated for me in, from Kherson down at the Black Sea, which was Skadovsk. 
It was Skidos down the Black Sea. We had a wonderful time there. They did, treated us wonderful. Anyway, she contacted me in 2014. She said, you remember me, Pastor Philip? She first sent me a, an email. She said, I want to talk to you. And so she contacted me again. She said, do you remember in, when I translated for you in Skadovsk in 2007, maybe eight, probably, see, maybe it was eight by the end time I did that at the Black Sea. And she said, I translated everything in those four services the best that I could. But all the time I was translating for you, I'm thinking, this is supposed to be a man of God, and this is crazy. Russia attacking Ukraine, this will never happen. And she said, I stood there, I translated everything just like you said, but thinking all the time, this is crazy. I've heard about this man, he is a man of God. Why would he say such a thing that God told him to warn Ukraine, Russia is going to attack Ukraine and conquer Ukraine over to the Nipper River? Nipper River and set up a new Soviet Union with Russia, Belarus, and Eastern Ukraine. She said, Philip, I am so sorry that I didn't believe you. Now Russia has occupied all of Crimea. They've attacked into the Donbass. Thousands of Ukrainian soldiers are dying fighting the Russians. I am so sorry. Would you please forgive me for not believing you? I've been told that same story the last two or three weeks from California, from Ohio. One man contacted me. 2009, I saw the Azovement of Prophecy, and I thought, this is crazy. My pastor, we were thinking, oh, this can't be. Russia would never touch Ukraine. He said, we didn't believe, but now we believe now, Philip. Family from California, the exact same thing. I saw this thing in 2007. People are contacting me from all over. I mean, all over. Philip. We heard this, I heard this prophecy. It went all over the place and that Russia was going to, it was like, everybody, you know, let's, you want to have a good laugh? Let's listen to this prophecy that Russia's going to attack Ukraine. He said, but now it happened. And we all believe, we all believe because everything, the detail. We were contacted, what, two nights ago from southwestern Ukraine. There's a young man from our church. He's named after me. His name is Philip. And they, his family, they escaped, part of his family, they escaped to the southwest. And so Sunday night, they went to a new church. I guess it was Sunday night. And uh, maybe it was Wednesday night. Went to a new church. And so at this new church, he said, well, I'm from Kiev. Of course, the millions of people from Kiev in that area have fled to western Ukraine. Oh, well over three million have, have fled Ukraine altogether. And uh, <clears throat> they said, asked him, well, what church are you from? He said, well, it's Christ Cathedral Church. It's where... Pastor Philip Barnett is, is pastor and built that building. They said, what name did you say? He said, well, Philip Barnett. He's like, you know, I'm named after him. And he said, they said, two nights ago, our church, we listened to Azovmina. And we listened to the cities that Philip said would be destroyed. And we got a map of the cities that would be destroyed and we laid the map of everything that is under attack now, and we put it over the top of the map that Philip prophesied. It fits exactly. Every city, everything he said, it fits exactly with what is taking place now. God says, I cannot destroy without warning first. God is, our country has broken our covenant with God. The covenant was made on November 11th, two, uh, 1620. The pilgrims on the Mayflower, they wrote what's called the Mayflower Compact. You heard about it? <clears throat> they don't teach that much in school anymore, but it took place anyway. And a lot of the sailors on that ship were not Christians, so they all signed the Mayflower Compact. It was a big argument, a big problem on that ship, but finally they agreed, they all signed it, and that it would take effect whenever they found the place where they were going to build a town, build a, to, to live. And they had searched different places. Finally, they came to Plymouth Rock, and they decided on this place, and they landed when it's on shore on November 11th, 1620. That's when the covenant that they would build a city on a hill, like ancient Israel, that would follow God and be a light to the whole world. When the first president, George Washington, was elected, they all went to the church that survived the 9-11 attack uh, on, in 2000, uh, 
2001. And they reaffirmed that covenant. George Washington and all the Continental Congress, they all bowed on their knees and reaffirmed the covenant that they, that America, they would build a city built on the hill with the Bible as its foundation. Now, the Bible is no longer the foundation. Uh, under the Obama administration, they made a law, men can marry men, women can marry women. Over 62 million babies have been murdered. The covenant has been broken. And we, America, are going to pay the cost. The cost will be in blood. You look at what's happening on Ukrainian TV, and if you think America is going to, to avoid the judgment of God, you're out in left field. Judgment is coming to our nation. This man who sent me the $2,000 to send to Ukraine, he said, Philip, I never heard of him. He'd never heard of me before. He saw the Azobin prophecy. He saw the original from Ukraine. And he saw Brother Mike's telecast. And my, my phone number was there. And he said, you know, he had seen the Azobin of prophecy for 2007. But now he has seen the recent work through, he said, your friend Mike. It's always, your friend Mike, your friend Mike. And he said, I want to tell you, I don't believe in prophets. None of them. None of them. I don't believe it. It's just, he said, people, they have a problem. Say, oh, I need to find a prophet to tell me what to do. He said, get in the Bible and open the Bible and live by faith. You don't go to some prophet. I said, exactly. I told people exactly the same thing in Kiev. You don't seek for a prophet. You open the Bible and you live by faith and find some prophet to tell you what to do. He said, but I don't like any prophets. He said, but you're different than everybody. He said, use something that, you, your spirit, he says, I trust you. I said, I'll, I have a, a, an organization called the Day of the Lord Church, the Day of the Lord Association Church. I said, just send it to the Day of the Lord, and I can give you a tax credit. He said, I don't want a tax credit. He said, I've already seen. I can trust you. I'm sending you the money, and you send it to Ukraine, to whoever needs it. It's like, praise God. Praise God. Praise God. Praise God. And so God, that $200 I thought I was, might be able to squeak out of the offering in, in Houston because I was going to a small church, smaller than this number here today, even though the mayor of the town came. And, and, and uh, anyway, so he made that. I got 10 times more than what I was expecting to be able to send to Ukraine. So a Zobman of one has taken place. When I, when I was looking at the cars leaving Kiev, it's like, well, Azobin started in 2014. Now it's the next phase. And I'm looking at all of those hundreds of thousands of cars. And we're calling people. I mean, every day, calling, calling, calling. People are calling us. And Philip, what do you think? Is this a Zobin? And Philip, is this a Zobin? It's like, well, I don't know, but it seems like it is. I, when I looked at all of those cars, it's like I remember what God told me. When I looked out of the kitchen window and God says there will be two evacuations from Kiev, the first one will take place when the Russian army is closing in on Kiev. The second will be when nuclear war starts between the United States and a reformed Soviet Union. <laughs> 